I'm Erin Wilson, and you are listening to Inside NC Labor, a podcast designed to inform and educate North Carolina citizens on the role that the Department of Labor plays in state government. Good morning, everyone. Uh, My name is Erin Wilson. I'm the Director of Communications for the North Carolina Department of Labor, and I'm here with my co-host, Meredith Watson, and I'm a Public Information Officer for the North Carolina Department of Labor. And today our guest is Jennifer Haywood. She's the Deputy Commissioner of the Occupational Safety and Health Division at the department, and we're going to talk to her about um, her role at the Department of Labor in the past and her first year as the Director of OSH. So welcome, Jennifer. Thanks, Erin and Meredith. I'm happy to be here. So Jennifer, could you start by introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about your background here at the department, where you come from, all that good stuff? Sure. I will try to keep it short and not go into too much detail, but um, I'm a native of North Carolina, which if anyone uh, else is from around here, you know, that's kind of rare these days is to meet people from Raleigh who actually grew up in Raleigh, but I went to high school here in Raleigh and I graduated from NC State and I came to work here at the Department of Labor almost 18 years ago. I've had a variety of different roles here at the department, but um, I, I will say that I think this is the best place you could work, especially in state government. We're very much a family around here. I've made some some of my best friends here at work. Um, And I think we do really, really important, really good work here at the department. So Jennifer, you said you've been here for almost a little over 18 years and you started out in the administration division here at the department and now you work in OSH. So has there been anything that translates from your different roles in administration to OSH for you or has it been an entirely new process? Can I say yes to all of that? Of course. (laughs) I'll tell you, I'll I'll just give you a little bit of background on what I did in all the years before I um, went over to the OSH side of the house. But when I first came here all those years ago, I came in as sort of an entry level legislative assistant. And um, honestly, I did my my degree in college was in psychology. I I didn't focus on political science. I didn't know a whole lot about the legislative process, and I really didn't know a whole lot about the Department of Labor other than we, I think, inspected elevators. (laughs) I think that may have been the only thing I knew about the department, but. I spent about seven years in that legislative liaison role and then was really grateful to get a permission to the director of legislative affairs at the beginning of 2013 and served in that role for eight years. So as legislative director and legislative liaison, you really have to learn a lot about what the entire department does because you have to defend and advocate for um, the department's entire budget across the whole agency, as well as advocate for legislative priorities, as well as, um, you know, work with people who have ideas about things that the department maybe should or shouldn't be doing. So you really just have to, you really have to develop a pretty strong base of knowledge about what all of our different bureaus do across the board. And then that easily translated into the um, role as Director of Communications, which I accepted in January of 2021. Um, It was really helpful to have that entire department background going into the Communications Director role because it, it was just, it made it a whole lot easier to understand how you answered those questions from the media. Um, And the, the thing about all of those roles that I had, that I held, was that you didn't necessarily need to know all the answers, but you needed to know where to get the answers. And you needed to know who was going to be able to help you. Um, So all that is like a really roundabout way of saying that I took all that knowledge that I had developed in those roles and took it over to the OSH division. And now, um, learning all that I didn't know <laughs> about OSH. I think I knew all of maybe the key pieces about the budget for um, our OSH bureaus. Uh, I knew the basics of all of the statutes and the standards that we enforce. I knew the people 
which, which has been incredibly helpful, but at least I knew all of our people. I know that our stake, I know our stakeholders that we work with. I really ap- appreciated all of, of the knowledge that I had built in the um, government affairs and the communications um, work that I had done, but I had no idea how much I didn't know. <laughs> Uh, and so in that way it has been an entirely new beast that every day I realize what I don't know. So with all of that being said, what does a day-to-day look like for you in OSH? I'm sure it's completely different than what it looked like over here in administration. It does look very different from how it did in administration, but as I'm sure you all can relate to in communications, there is no day-to-day. Every day is different. Um, It was like that in communications. It was like that in government affairs. And it is absolutely 100% like that in OSH. I keep waiting for some day that was like another day that I've had. And it it hasn't happened yet. But, you know, isn't that what's exciting about a job? You you don't want a job where you just come to work knowing exactly what's going to happen. But, you know, stopping there, it, it would be it would be great if one day I could actually set an agenda and do all the things that were on my agenda for the day and go home feeling very accomplished. But I don't think I've had one of those days in, yet in a year either. Um, so even though I can't really tell you what a typical day-to-day looks like, I can tell you what um, some of the things are that I might encounter on a daily basis. Um, there are a lot of meetings. <laughs> Uh, you know, we are, the OSH division is a big division. We have about 215 positions and we, um, we, we do a lot of different things from compliance to consultation to training and education um, and, and records management and surveys and things like that. So one of the biggest things for me over the past year has been really kind of getting into the weeds on exactly how all of our bureaus function and how they work together. And again, I had a um, kind of higher level knowledge of all of that, but it's much different when you're in the weeds on it every day. So my day typically always involves a meeting of some sort, usually with um, a bureau chief, sometimes with um, outside stakeholders that want to come in and talk to the OSH division about ways that we can work together. We also operate with just countless policies and procedures that um, that we're always looking at revising um, field operations manuals operational notices um, uh, administrative procedure notices um, the OSH division pretty much runs on policies and procedures and even though we're a state plan and we have a lot of independence we still have to make sure that we com- we comply with everything that federal OSHA is putting out. So anytime federal OSHA puts out a new procedure or a new proposed rule or some sort of special emphasis program, we have to go through all of our documentation and our procedures for how we do things in North Carolina and make sure that we do in fact conform to whatever that is. So there's a lot of reviewing of that kind of thing. One of the great things about this role is that I get to represent the division at a lot of events um, externally, so um, there's a lot of that. Um, There's a lot of strategic planning for the future. Um, One of the challenging things is that while we have so much expertise through our staff in the division, this is expertise that's not going to work here forever. (laughs) These are people who Um, are someday going to earn their retirement and they're going to walk away with decades of of operational experience and that requires constant planning for the future about how we're going to make sure that these people don't walk away and we're we're left with some sort of huge knowledge gap so another big part of what I'm doing is planning for the future learning all I can in this role to make sure that if I am in fact here in this position for um, for several years to come in the future that I know how to fill in those gaps when those people, um, again, decide that it's their time to retire. Um, we deal with the unexpected. Again, you all in communication certainly understand you, you can't plan what the media is going to call you about. 
Um, we unfortunately can't plan for what sort of occupational um, safety or health accident may happen. Um, and you know, another big part of that is, you know, in working with the media, there are there are always what we call your high-profile cases, and um, so a lot of a lot of what we do on a weekly basis is meet with our compliance officers about the progress in those. Um, we we call them CFR meetings where. We just kind of go through where are you in, in this inspection, um, what are your thoughts for citations, what are the um, elements in this case that you're looking at, and given that we only have six months to issue citations, what do we need to do to make sure that happens? So that's just a small idea of what might happen every day. Okay, so every job presents a set of challenges. Some are anticipated, some are not. What has challenged you more in this role than you anticipated? That's an interesting question. I mean, I think I don't think that I walked into this job not anticipating challenges. I knew full well that it was going to be incredibly challenging. Um, there are challenges that we've been dealing with for several years about um, vacant positions, not being able to hire qualified staff. Um, some of that has been getting better over the past few months. The challenges of retaining our very qualified staff, th those are certainly challenges. And again, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, a, a very, very qualified workforce that will be eligible for retirement. That's the challenge and, and how do we build and prepare for the future. Um, but I kind of knew all those things coming in. Um, I, I think the thing that has been surprising to me is how much this has um, humbled me <laughs> in terms of um, being surrounded. Everyone that works around me knows more than I do. And it has been extremely challenging professionally and personally to go from being in a role where I felt fairly confident on a day-to-day -day basis to all of a sudden being stretched and pushed way outside my comfort zone and feeling like every day is just I'm learning something new. There's a new challenge. There's problems that I had never even thought about how to handle or how to deal with. Um, and I don't really mean that in a negative way at all. I think we could all use a good dose of humility and this has certainly been my year of humility. <laughs> Uh, and, and the good thing about that is uh, I'm surrounded by wonderful people who know exactly what they're doing and have helped me in every single way that I have needed and, and helped me in ways that I didn't know that I needed. Um, so that, I think maybe some of that is not entirely what I anticipated. So you've been in Osh for almost a year. What has been the main takeaway or lesson that you've learned so far? Mm, other than humility, <laughs> I uh, honestly how much I love this job and love this work. Being the director of the OSH division was never part of my career plan. It was something that was rather unexpected when Commissioner Dobson asked me if I would be interested. Uh, so I was, I was very much caught off guard, I guess you would say, when this opportunity was presented to me. Um, I, I, in full in full honesty, do not have uh, a workplace safety and health background, so it's just not something that I ever thought I would have the opportunity to do. Um, all that said, I love the role. It has given me an opportunity to learn new things in a way that I don't know that I would have otherwise had the opportunity. Um, and I think my main takeaway is that all of that is because of the people that I get to work with every day. I, I knew it before, but I know it so much more now that we have a great department and our OSH division is made up of 100% capable, excited, knowledgeable people who come here. They're serious about the work that they do. They have, a, they have a good time with it, but they care 
Um, and I don't know that you see that in every state agency, but our people care about the work that they do and they want to be here. And I am just very thankful to be a part of that. All right. Well, thank you for being on our podcast today, Jennifer. And uh, we look forward to seeing your next year of time in the OSH division and hopefully your many years to come in the labor department. Well, I'll be back here in a year to tell you all about it. (laughs) Thanks so much for tuning in, y'all. And remember, your safety is our priority.